demonstrate a B-bore 40 inch annular cutter. I'm cutting through pieces of two inch thick steel. These are going to be press plates for a hundred ton hydraulic forge. And I really need the holes to be perfectly lined up. So the idea is to cut through one and about halfway into the other one, slide it off and then use the existing hole to line up the next set of holes as they go through. I'm going to have, uh, it's going to be a four column, it's going to be a four column shop press with um, using these just brass, brass bushings on linear uh, linear shafting to, as it slides up and down. So if there's any crookedness, they're going to they're going to bind up. So to do that, I got this handy dandy Bevor 40H. Um, so first thing we do is put some cutting fluid in there. I'm using Master Fluid Solution. Uh, I don't know, trim mist, synthetic mist, cooling fluid. I just, I don't really measure it that close. I just put a splash of it in a gallon of water. And I don't mess with using distilled water. You're supposed to, you know, this was like, I, I don't know if you were like cutting exotics with diamond bits or something really expensive, I do it. But this is all just, um, you know, eBay, eBay drill equipment. So anyway, let's top this off. Okay, so it's got a magnetic brace that's controlled by the uh, <coughs> uh, controlled by the green switch. I'll take a I'll just take a to make sure this thing seats square on here and doesn't get a chip caught up under it and knock it off knock it off 90 degrees. I'll uh, you know make sure everything's wiped down. So to get to this, you need two two wrenches on this thing. A for, uh, five millimeter for the cutter head and a six millimeter for raising this up and down. It's got a little over two inch stroke on this thing. Um, let me see, I'll do that. So as you, you can see, as it goes, you know, you go the full length. Well, this actually, okay, so this actually went three inches all the way down and you can, you can adjust the, you can adjust where it is on the dovetail. So you can drill part way into your hole, then slide it down farther on the dovetail and get a deeper hole. So anyway, I'm going to take the annular cutter off of here so I can put in the pilot shaft. That's this little thing. It, it lines up to the center, the mark that I center punched and center drilled on here. Uh, it works, works best. I do about, leave about three, three threads on here and get ready to catch it so you don't bang your carbide. It's dust brittle. I don't want to break it. Um, all right. Now you are. Oh yeah. Here's a here's a quick side tip. If you're um, if you take a paintbrush and just cut it off with scissors, it makes stiffer bristles for cleaning cleaning shifts. So anyway, this slides through here. This can there's a spring inside here. This thing will move up and down, but it maxes out before you even get to two inches deep. So you have to cut your hole part part ways then pull the pilot thing out after it started and then and then get back to it get back to drilling your hole so two you know these two things we just had them out this it's a good snug fit you can kind of feel well you can feel that spring pushing back against you um, when you tighten it it'll there shouldn't be any thread sticking out if there are the things probably not quite square in there or you're not on one of the flats on the annular cutter um, not, I'm not putting it in there too tight. All right, now we can zoom in to our, if we can zoom into this spot right here, thanks to my capable assistant. So I'm going to align the hole. You can just kind of push it in there. And because it's spring loaded, you can just kind of feel, you can feel when it's on the center of the hole. It'll, I, I don't know how to describe it exactly, but you just put it in there, put it in there and wiggle it left left to right and front to back and it lines up. So we're lined up. I'm going to kick that. We can probably back out a little bit, but stay focused on this. I'm going to turn it on. I used a, to set the RPM, the recommended, recommended RPM for an inch and a half cutter is about 
one, one thing said 213 RPM, another said 240 to 400. I set it at like 238. I used this, um, I got this uh, DT2234C plus digital tachometer off Amazon for um, 15 bucks US in 2023. The, um, you put a little piece of tape right here and then you hit this and it'll actually tell you the RPM. So I know I got my RPM set right. You have to put this, it, this thing comes with this reflective tape and it just fell off as I was using it. This thing gets completely piled up with chips. And uh, yeah, so I, it, anyway, I know it's set right. So now we need to make sure there is water coming profusely out of the um, out of this. So I, it's not shown, but there's a needle valve on the back side of this tank. I'm gonna turn it on. Now see, I don't see any water drizzling out of there. So I actually cut a 3 16 hole in the tank. I'm gonna give it a little puff, get things moving. And now if you look, if you look right here, you can see there's a pretty, pretty decent stream of water coming out of there. Um, you know, anymore it's starting to drip down onto the floor and all that, and I don't, that makes me nervous even with the GFI outlet. So that, that's enough water. I'm also using this, um, digit, this uh, laser inframeter. This is a Harbor Freight Special. You can see right now, I mean, it's like freezing cold outside and snowing. This thing's sitting at 65 degrees. So let's kick this on. Stop talking and start drilling. We can probably zoom in on the cutter action. So I'm, I'm doing this really light pressure until the carbide teeth are completely embedded inside the cut because I don't want the carbide to rock back and forth when they're in the cut, I should say that it should reduce the chance that the carbide teeth are coming out. I'm going to give it a little more pressure. And you can see, you can see the chip shutting up. That's what knocks my reflective tape off when I pass on it. It's just kind of a mess. Just, just like the weight of my arm, I'm barely pulling down. And it's actually, you can, you can see right here, you can watch. Just in the time, so just in the, in, the, in the time it took to do this, I'm taking a little chance that I get sliced on this stuff. These uh, nitrile gloves are pretty thick and tend to work. So you can see, you know, in the amount of time this, you know, I got maybe three sixteenths of an inch down there. My bit heated up to, now it's, you know, 77 degrees, 78 or 75 degrees. So the bit, bit heated up about, um, about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like, that, that's pretty good compared to a twist drill. Um, also, so eventually, eventually you're gonna take the pin out this will cut all the way up and pop a, pop a slug out of here. Now something that happens is you'll get a little, you get like a little rim on, on this and it actually spins and your, and your carbide teeth can't dig in. So when you, when you get to the point where you knock this slug out, turn it off, pull it up, you know, take your needle nose pliers. I just grabbed it on either side and wiggled it out. Um, so anyway, that's, yeah, that's it. Thank you.